Hey everyone, welcome to today's video. I'll be going over seven tips on creating yourself a to-do or a task list in Mighty.com and how to integrate that with your Google Calendar. Okay, so the first thing that's really important for you to set up is um, a way to filter your board, a way to look at the information so that you can pick apart pieces and pull out information that's relevant to you. Um, good way to think about it, it would be uh, if your business has different divisions or certain tasks that you wanna um, classify, I think the best way to do that really would be with tags. You can also set up a status column and change the statuses so that you have your divisions in there. Um, but the tags are great because you can use them across your boards they're not specific to one board. You can have them applied to all of them. So if you're looking for uh, applications in a different board or anything like that, you can filter it that way. So tags are a great way to do that. Uh, the way you filter out your board is right up here in filters. And you can see you can select whatever tag you need. And you'll pull out the information that's relevant to you. So here we have some accounting tasks that's on my to-do list. And you can clear your filters and reset your board. Now I do have my board set up that has far more tasks here. And I do have a company filter as well, as opposed to the tags. I just find for myself the way that I use um, Monday that it's a little bit simpler for me to have it in a status column where I can select which company I'm gonna be working on or what task the, uh, the task belongs to or which company the task belongs to. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna show you is how to set up recurring tasks. Um, this will happen a lot for repetitive tasks, things to do weekly or monthly. For myself, it's a lot of the weekly and monthly. Uh, you might see yourself needing something that's daily, but you can just kind of copy this process and then apply it to whatever you need to. So um, right here, you'll see two tasks that are set up weekly and monthly. Uh, they have a due date set up as well. And the timeline I'll come back to later on, but these are specific to one date. So they're going to be in the due date field. Um, so to do this, you got to set up a couple of automations. Um, the first one, or the first two are going to be up in here. So I have a weekly and a monthly due date um, automation. So when frequency changes to weekly, it'll set the due date to the date plus seven days. So when a new item is created and the frequency changes, or sorry, the status changes to um, weekly, it'll set a due date for seven days or if it's monthly for 30 days. Down here, I have a status or an automation that says when a status changes to done and create, move the item to completed. And finally, the last one you'll need is when a status changes to done and create, create an item in this, this, this board here to do. So I'll show you how that works. So here we have some monthly financial reports. And you can see here, I have some statuses. So working on it stuck. Pending review would be tasks that you need somebody else to review. I'll come back to that one a little later on. And then done and create. So this will complete the item, move it into the completed section, duplicate it, and then change the due date. So you'll see that here. And there you go. So there's your new monthly financial report to do task item. Okay, and we'll do the same thing with the weekly one. So see here the status done and create move it down to the completed section and create a new one what's great about this is that it'll let you keep your tasks completed so you can see when you completed the tasks and if you had any notes they'll stay in here so here you could have notes where you know bank reconciled hit it or you can write yourself notes and keep them in the proper, the proper item update. Uh, I also have a status that's done. It has it doesn't have done create. It's just done. The reason I did that is because you might have non-recurring tasks 
which you don't want to create a new one. You just want to complete it, move down your completed section. And so that way you can have just a done status where it'll move it, but won't create a new task item. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna to wanna to set up is due date notifications. So to do that, we're gonna go into our automations, go to our automation center, and we're gonna look at the notification section. And here you can see when date arrives, notify someone. So here you can select when you wanna be notified. So let's say three days before, and at what time of day, I like to do it around 9 a.m. That way I've been settled at work for a bit. I've gone through my emails and I'm ready to go. It's gonna ask you which column do you want to select? So we have two date columns on our board. I'm gonna select the due date column. And then who do you wanna notify? So here I'm gonna select the people column so that whoever's assigned to the task gets notified. And here you can customize the notification. So you can say whatever you need, um, the task is due is add that to the board and then what happens is you'll get a notification and if you've enabled desktop notifications you'll get one in the bottom corner as well but you'll get one up in here and it'll tell you that there's a task that's due and you can just click on it and it'll bring you right to the task a really great tip to have in your to-do list are checklists so this is a great way to clean up your board so you don't have multiple tasks um, or multiple steps for one task. You can have them all grouped up in the updates. Uh, the updates also be sitting in right here. And you'll, I'll show you what this looks like here. So you come on in and in here, you'll see a checklist that I've already created. So you can go ahead and just edit the update and add any steps that you would need. So I'll go ahead and add one here. Save it. And a great thing to do is to pin it to the top. So that way if updates come in afterwards, they'll go underneath. They won't sit on top and then you'll lose your checklist. And if ever you need want to create a new checklist or add a second one, they're just right here in the updates checklist. So now that I've completed this template, I'm gonna let it sit at the top and whenever I need it, I'll just duplicate the item and change the information that I need. So I'll go down here duplicate items and updates. And I'll go ahead and just change the name. I'm gonna set a due date for today. And I also have an automation that says when status is on working on it, it'll move over to my to-do list. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. There you go. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is set up some views. That way you can look at your data in different ways. A lot of people love their calendar views. Timeline view is another great one. So I'll show you how to set that up. Over here, you'll see our main table view. Just click the drop down, and we'll add a view and we'll start with the calendar view. So once you do that, you can go in, you'll see your tasks have populated into a calendar. You can go ahead and you can just rename this as well if you want to name it anything else. Or we can add another view, which is a timeline view. It's really great for projects. So I'm gonna go back to my main table first and create a project. So I'll put that in our to-do list. Our projects typically last uh, over a span of time and that's why I have a timeline section here as well. So I'm gonna set up a non-recurring project, assign it to myself and set a timeline. So I'll start that from Sunday to Wednesday. Okay, now when I add the timeline view, you'll see the project lapses over multiple days. And this way you can see if you're overlapping on projects or you can have a better view of your timeline. It also show up in your calendar this way as well. Now it's important to note that your filters that we set up they'll still work in your calendars. So if you want to look at just your accounting tasks, you can do that as well. Or we can clear that reset and see everything. 
if I had multiple people on my board, so I'll go ahead and change a task, assign it to somebody else. So if I change this project and I'll assign it to Tony, I can also look at a calendar and filter out results that are assigned to him or to myself. So now that you can see the project has been assigned to Tony, so it's on his schedule and it won't be on mine. So this is a great way to integrate having multiple uh, people assigned to one board, having multiple views of your calendars and being able to filter out results so you can see who has which tasks and when they're gonna be due. You also don't need to go back to your main table view to handle your data. You can go in in the item updates in your calendar view as well. So if you wanted to change the project back to assign it to myself, I can just go in, remove Tony's name, add myself, and then close it out. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is integrate our board with our Google Calendar. This is a really great tool to bring in your tasks and to-do lists into Google Calendar where you might have meetings that sit there or Zoom calls, anything like that. So Google Calendar is a great tool and Monday can work with that. So the, rate, the way to do that is to go to your due date column, column settings, and select Google Calendar Sync. Now, if this is the first time that you set up a board with your Google Calendar, it'll ask you to sign in and follow some prompts. Um, so just go ahead and do that. And it's gonna ask you if you would like to sync the items that are assigned to you or all the items on the board. Now, I just want the ones that are assigned to me. So I'm gonna select that and go ahead and sync. Okay, so this is gonna take a few minutes. Once that's done, you can go ahead into your Google Calendar. And here they are. So here's the items that are on our board. You can see that they've brought over into our calendar. And you can do multiple boards with multiple different calendars and have them overlapping or filter them in and out. So here's another board that I have tasks on and you can see it brings it in a different color or you can take it out. So this is great if you get assigned a new item. So if we go new task, we'll fill in some details. And I'll assign it to myself. And if we go to Google Calendar, we can see our new task item has been created here as well. The next thing we're gonna do is set up notifications and item creations to create tasks for other people or in different boards. Um, so you can do this one of two ways. You could have a main task board where there's multiple people that'll collaborate, or you can have each person on your team have their own board and then create automations that will create an item in their board. So here, if we have review tenant application from John Smith, I can assign this to anybody I need to. So let's assign that to Tony and I'm gonna send a pending review status. So I have an automation set up for a notification on this pending review. So I'll show you how that works here. Notifications. When a status changes to something, notify someone. So we're gonna go ahead and select our status. Pending review, who do I wanna notify? The person that's assigned to the task, so that'd be the people column and the notification. Okay, so we're gonna add that to our board. And just to show you guys the notification, I'm gonna put myself back as the person that's assigned to the task. And I'll flip this over to pending. And you can see I got a notification here as well in my notification window. So you can go ahead and click on the notification. It'll actually bring up the task that we made earlier with the checklist. So it, you can go ahead and start working on reviewing this application. 
the other way that we can do this would be to create an item in somebody else's board. So when we flip our status over to pending, we'd like to take this information that's here and send it over to somebody else. So we can go ahead and do that. Automations. And we're gonna go with item creation. Okay, so right here, when status changes to something, create an item in board. So we're gonna add this to our board. Which status do we want? Or sorry, which column? We want the status column. And when it's changed to pending, we wanna create an item in board. You have to select which board first. So I'll go ahead and select my other to-do list. And create the item. So here it'll pull in the columns that are in the board you're sending it to. And it'll ask you which fields you wanna take from your board and populate into the new one. So I'll just leave this as is for now, but you can see where you can select the, the name of the task, which status, the due date, and the person that's assigned to this task. There, now when I go ahead, I'll reset this status. And when I create on pending review, it'll do two things now. It'll give me a notification and it will also create a task right here, review tenant application for John Smith. So you can see that it's the same task that was here. So there you have it. Those are the seven basic tips on how to create a to-do list or a task list in monday.com and have that integrated with your Google Calendar. Make sure you subscribe if you wanna see any future videos. Thanks for tuning in.